Since its founding in 1802, the United States Military Academy at West Point has prepared selected young men for careers of service to their country. In July 1976, after 174 years of male tradition, young women were offered the same opportunities. 119 were admitted, and although fictionalized, the story is based upon the experiences of those women. Attention, please. Good morning. My name is Cadet Corporal Douglas Davidson. Welcome and congratulations on being admitted to West Point. The thousands who have preceded you, from Robert E. Lee to Dwight Eisenhower, George Patton, and Douglas MacArthur, have won for this institution the most esteemed reputation in the world. It wasn't easy for you to get in here. It will not be easy for you to stay. The defense of our country requires that we make the training tough so that our country has army officers who have proven their honor, stamina, loyalty, skill, and strength of character beyond any doubt. This summer, you will undergo cadet basic training, more commonly known as Beast Barracks. It will probably be the most difficult eight weeks of your lives. You will learn to perform quickly and efficiently under severe conditions of stress, so that in September, when the academic year begins, you will be qualified to join the full Corps of Cadets. Thank you. Well, this is it. Bye, darling. I hope it's everything you want it to be. Yeah. Love you. Oh, thanks a lot for driving us over. I still think you're making a big mistake. Hey, let's not go through that again. I mean, it's tough enough for the men here, let alone the girls. I mean, you heard what he said. I know. Bye. Don't forget to write. Goodbye, darling. And remember, let us know if you need anything. Hmm? Okay. Remember what I told you. Give it everything you've got, and you'll make out fine. I'll remember everything, Dad. I know you will. <laughs> Bye, darling. And you be good. And you do what they tell you. I will. <laughs> teach you the proper execution of a military salute. A well-executed salute is the hallmark of a West Pointer. You'll be expected to have a flawless salute at all times. Raise the right hand until the tip of the forefinger touches the headgear. If no headgear is worn, the tip of the forefinger will touch the forehead just above and slightly to the right of the right eye. On the second count, snap your right arm smartly back down to your side. At this time, do you have any questions concerning the proper execution of a military salute or the proper position of attention? No. Proceed inside. New Cadet Hagen, you're in room 430. Report them, put your gear away. Hug the walls and square the corners. Yes, sir. Next. Cadet Tamper Scott, report. Cadet Scott. Your name is New Cadet Scott. You will always refer to yourself as such. You will address all officers and upperclassmen as sir. You will speak only when spoken to. When corrected, you will respond in one of four ways. Yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir, and sir, I do not understand. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Just a minute. Anyone say you were dismissed? No, sir. Repeat the four responses. No. Is that one of the four responses? No, sir. What are they? 
Yes, sir. No, sir. No excuse, sir. And I do not understand. The fourth response is, sir, I do not understand. Again. Yes, sir. No, sir. No excuse, sir. And, sir, I do not understand. You better learn those codes or you find yourself in big trouble. You're in room 410. Report there and put your gear away. Hug the walls and square the corners. Yes, sir. Next. Excuse me. Is this room 410? That's what it says on the door. Oh. <laughs> I guess we're roommates. Oh, that's great. I'm Molly Dahl. I guess this is our new home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Scott, I think. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. Uh, this is my bed, and they assigned you that one. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Do you believe all this? Are you kidding? This is nothing. They're nice the first day. Really? That's why they call it Beast Barracks. <laughs> At least I have the right name for it. Scott. Yep, here, sir. D-A-H-L. Gall, that's me, sir. My name is Cadet Corporal J.J. Palfrey. I'm your squad leader. If you have any questions, you'll find me in room 415. And from now on, when an upperclassman enters your room, you will snap to attention. Attention! New cadets are required to press the backs of the necks against the collars at all times. This teaches the proper military position of attention and develops good posture. I said press. That's better. Carry on. At West Point, the command to carry on means that you will resume your work. Put those clothes away. Yes, sir. Hold it. Later in the week, you receive diagrams showing how each item goes. In the meantime, T-shirt should be folded like that and placed like that. These, this go. <coughs> Did I say you could laugh? I'm sorry. I mean, no, sir. Are you? It is not my wish that you are here, but I will have a great deal to do with whether or not you remain. So add this to the list of regulations you'll be learning in the next couple of weeks. Training will not be undermined by S-E-X. Sex. You will now go downstairs for assembly for drill formation in the company area. Don't be late. I don't think he likes us. Step on out here. I want you to march for me by yourself. Left, face, forward, march. You can get Zachary, halt. Drive on back here, Zachary. Miss Zachary, you are now at West Point. You are not in a bathing beauty contest. You will learn how to march. You will not sashay. Do you understand that? Fall back into your squad. Left. Command forward march. You will keep your interval. Hook! You, you're not a duck. I want the speed at 45. You turn yours out to 45. That's the lineup. 
Come again. Roland Thristian, Thumbs Long seems you proud. Why, when I dismiss you, you will return to your rooms and prepare for the parade, which is to take place in 1700 hours. Uniform of Sierra, white shirt, gray trousers you were issued this morning, and white gloves. Squad! Dismiss! girls resigned already. Stuck. Well, fix it. Yes, yes, sir. Report. First squad's all present. Second squad's all present. Third squad all present. Fourth squad all present. Fourth squad all present. Third squad all present. Fourth squad's all present. The two leaders take charge of your platoons. Your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Jennifer Evelyn Scott, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and bear true allegiance to the national government. Attention! Tomorrow you will receive fourth class system pamphlets. They tell you exactly what you will and will not do in the coming year. On page 26, paragraph 6, it states, New cadets will not lie on their beds between Reveille and Taps. As for being late for formation, don't ever let that happen again. Do you understand, new cadets? Yes, sir. Do you know what a 4C is? No, sir. It is a fourth class performance report. Starting next week, you give me cause and I'll show you exactly how it's used. But, sir, it wasn't her fault, her zipper. I was not talking to you! In the future, allow yourself more time to get dressed. Yes, sir. You, cadet, we have a term for people like you. It's BJ. That means bold before June. Now, if you are still here in June, which I doubt, you will be recognized. Until then, you are a non-person, and the only utterance that I will tolerate from you is yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir, and sir, I do not understand. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You're not going to cry, are you? No. Don't worry about it. Wouldn't give him the satisfaction. Left face. Woo! Right face. I got ten bucks as half of them don't make it through beasts. Ten more, the rest drop out before Christmas. <laughs> Look, I got you both covered. I think a lot of them will stick it out. You sound like you want them to. Well, why not, JJ? Some of them are kind of cute. Hey, come on. Give them a break. No way. They get exactly the same treatment as the men do. Well, they do? Look, I saw the way you were leaning on some of them today. 
It's easy for you to talk. You don't have any women in your squad. Well, I can't help that, can I? It's just the way the assignments work out. Sure. And maybe you pulled a few strings? Oh, quit moaning, J.J. These chicks are giving you a break and you don't even know it. I'm serious. You whip them into shape, I guarantee you make a lot of points with attack officers. He's right, J.J. You know, my father isn't in the State Department. Yo, well, my old man doesn't pull strings for me, J.J. Look, can't you sleep? No. You know, my dad tried to tell me about this place, but I guess you just have to experience it firsthand. Your dad? Did he go to West Point? Class of 55. He says that you shouldn't let it get you down. And if you just hang in here, you can really learn a lot in Beast. Did you come here because of your dad? Well, sure. He really loves the Army. And I know that if he had a son, he'd be here. I'd like to make him proud of me. But that's not the only reason. I mean, it's a really great break. I mean, just think of the opportunities to serve the country. Why did you come here? A lot of the same reasons. Free education, opportunities, and my mom. What about your mom? Well, she and my dad split up when I was 10. A little later on, he was killed in a car accident. And she just went to pieces. She was caught completely unprepared and had to settle for a job in a department store. She's still there. So, I came here to get my life together, to learn to be independent, and to stand on my own two feet. Good night, Jen. Night, Molly. you're having fun at Michigan because it's pretty rough here. I thought I could handle it, but at times I'm not so sure. I miss you terribly and wish you'd write more often. Sorry you got banged up in football practice, but I guess I'll be joining the club tomorrow when we hit the obstacle course. Oh, 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 oh,
Yes, sir. Has that turkey recognized you? No, sir. Then call it by its proper name. Yes, sir. Sir, for dinner we're having roast Thomas turkey, new baby green peas and butter sauce, mashed potatoes and Boston cream pie. Five minutes, sir. Good. That's better. <laughs> Carl Young, attend, shun. Take seats. Greenway. Yes, sir. What is the rule for new cadets in the mess hall? Sir, new cadets are to sit with proper posture, one fist distance from the back of the chair, feet flat on the floor, and head up, and eyes confined to the physical boundaries of the table, sir. And were your eyes confined to the physical boundaries of this table? No, sir. Report to my room at 1,400 hours with the 4C. Yes, sir. Work. Zachary. Yes, sir. Are you spazzing out on me? You're at West Point. You are not in the barn to pass that glass back. Yes, sir. Start it over again, quickly. Yo. Know, another few weeks with those girls, and now Palfrey's gonna be climbing the walls. Yeah. Man, are we lucky. Dear Mom, I'm still hanging in here, and you'll never guess what happened. One of the upperclassmen actually smiled and winked at me. He seems nice, but of course strictly off limits. Tomorrow we come to the final test of Beast Barracks, the infamous 12-mile march in full combat gear, followed by four days of field training. The guys all say this will separate the men from the girls. We'll see. Serious, sir. Then straighten up. Yes, sir. Jen, what's the matter? Oh, my boot's pinching. Well, why didn't you tell him? <sighs> if I did, he put me on crutches. Jen, no wonder you were limping. 
you. We gotta get that taken care of. Scott, the next time I ask you if something's wrong, I expect you to level with me. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Don't try to be a hero, a heroine. You make sure she gets the blister rep. Yes, sir. Scott! Target, you will be commanded to halt, at which time you will assume a good attack position, ready for the battle which you are about to be engaged. At this time, the live target will ask you a series of questions, which you must respond to by physically nodding your head. This is to ensure that you are responsive to his command. Now get on out of here! <laughs> Cadet Jennifer Scott. Hello, Jennifer. Good afternoon, ma'am. Miss Atwood's a reporter from New York. She'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Shall we uh, go sit down over there? Boy, next thing you know, she's going to have a Hollywood contract. Greenway, don't blame her. She didn't ask for it. Out of my life. Is this OK? Yeah. Well, I'm very impressed with what I've seen here today. Must be exciting being a part of all this. Yes, ma'am. It's uh, a challenge. Hey, Doug? Yeah. What's all that about? Our reporter needed somebody for an interview. Attack officers told us to cooperate. Don't look so happy. And what about stress? Stress? <sighs> well, I think we can handle it as well as the men. Maybe even better? Sometimes, yeah. But it is true that some of the girls have actually broken down and cried. Yeah, but crying isn't exactly a crime. Uh, there are times when the men would like to cry, but they don't. Do you feel the men are less mature than the girls? Why is it that everybody calls them men and us girls? Do you feel they're little boys? In some cases, yeah. Company! Excuse me. All right, everybody, listen up. Land navigation will begin in 10 minutes. 
Each team will follow a triangular course. The object is to locate the turning points and return here with the coded letters within the allotted time. Following are your team assignments. Team Victor Bravo, Greenway and Scott. Team Alpha Tango, Hagen and Baker. Greenway's luck. Team Foxtrot Yankee, Houston and Springfield. All right, give me a company formation out here on the road. Move out! Come on, Scott. We're behind schedule. I would get stuck with a female with blisters on her feet. I'm just trying to pace the course accurately. You can't do it the way you're running. Now your strides are too short. Well, yours are too long. Anyway, the turnoff point should be right around here. Come on. Now we go 420 meters on an azimuth of 080 degrees. Oh, great. It's gonna rain. Well, let's move it, or do you have to rest? No, I do not have to rest. Come on. Look, we're never gonna make it to this crud. Look, we gotta go around. Come on! Greenway, come back here! We gotta find the final turning point or we're gonna be late. I already found it by following the asthma. Oh, yeah. Hey, great. Uh, uh, say, look, we only got 20 minutes to get back. Come on, let's go. Jennifer, come on, our time's almost up. Oh, it's killing me. Look, B, you go ahead. Report in. You gonna be all right? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Whiskey Zulu 24, state your position. Over. Whiskey Zulu 24, what is your position? Over. Victor Bravo reporting in, sir. Roger, wait. Tom. Where's your teammate? She hold you up? Well, tell the truth, sir. She found the final turning point. You maxed the course. You're in first place. That's all. Beast Barracks. 
My congratulations. Yesterday, the entire cadet corps returned from summer duty. When you're assigned to your new companies throughout the corps, you're going to encounter 10 times as many upperclassmen as before. That's 3,000 in all. Remember, as plebes, you're still not permitted to fraternize with upperclassmen until recognition ceremony next June. So be on your toes and demonstrate that you've got what it takes to drive on through. Company! Platoon! Platoon! Seventh Company! Dismiss! Well, they made it, Tom. Where's my ten bucks? You get it. When? When I retire. <laughs> hey, well, good job, JJ. That's it. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. Mom, we made it. <laughs> we really made it. Yeah, it's a little harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, it's going to be a breeze from here on out. Well, for you, maybe, but not for me. Why? Engineering fundamentals and calculus. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm really good at that stuff, so if you need some help, you can come knock on my door. Deal. Thanks. <laughs> come in. Hi, guys. They just posted the new assignments. And you two go to 3rd Regiment, Company G, room 436. Both of us? Sure. <laughs> I can't believe it. Greenway, you finally brought us some good news. Yeah, I guess so. You want some more good news? Yeah. You know who your squad leader is? Who? <laughs> J.J. Palfrey. <laughs> you know, Finn is the company commander. No. Oh, don't worry about it, though. I got him, too. Well, that's it. See you. How could this happen to us? Just lucky, I guess. this newspaper no sir then you read it and report to my room at 1900 hours with a pad of four C's yes sir So she shot her mouth off. It's not such a big deal, JJ. She made us look bad. Look, Doug, in the future, I would appreciate it if you'd refrain from shoving my plebes into the path of reporters. I didn't shove her. I told you I was assigned to escort the reporter and cooperate. Come in. Sir, Cadet Scott reports to Cadet Palfrey as ordered. You read that article? Yes, sir. And did you say that some of the men at West Point behaved like little boys? Well? Yes, sir. To whom were you referring? To Mr. Davidson? No, sir. To me? No, sir. To whom, then? Sir, may I explain? No, you may not. Wait a minute, J.J. You ask her a question, give her a chance. Mr. Davidson, this is a matter of discipline within my squad. I would appreciate it very much if you would excuse us. That statement casts a reflection on every one of us here at West Point. It is self-serving, disloyal, and contrary to a tradition of team spirit that has unified this corps of cadets for nearly 200 years. You look pretty sloppy to me, miss. Those shoes are not properly shined. You're written up on that. Yes, sir. 
I wouldn't go around shooting off my mouth if I didn't have myself together. Do you know your fourth class knowledge? I believe so, sir. What are the mistakes on the French monument? Sir, the cape is blowing in one direction, the flag in the other. The sword is straight and the... the... Cease work! You do not know that! How'd you make out? Five new merits and a four C. Just for that newspaper article? No, for everything you could find. I think he's trying to make me quit. But I won't let him. <laughs> staring at the class big mouth would you knock it off Hagen it's not her fault that reporter made her say a lot of things that she never intended to say okay she said it and it sounded like she meant it so what she was right you keep quiet get off our backs doesn't matter if she was right it just means they're gonna be harder on us now such a potential hunt Sir, section is all present. Fine. Take seats. Are there any questions about last night's assignment? Sir, I don't understand the definition of a parabola. All right. Uh, it's easy to be confused about that. On page 65 of your text, there's a diagram of a parabola. Given a fixed line called the directrix and a fixed point called the focus, the parabola is the set of all points that are equidistant from the fixed line and the fixed point. Now, if we use the Pythagorean theorem in the form of the distance formula, it's a simple task to come up with an equation for a parabola. Afternoon, sir. Afternoon. You too, Hall. Are you the plebe who made the papers last week? Yes, sir. You carry on, Miss Dahl. Yes, sir. Well, you seem to have a pretty high opinion of yourself, Miss Scott. You think you can take stress better than I can? No, sir. Well, you implied that. Give me the history of the Great Chain. Sir. The history of the Great Chain is, in 1777, it was determined that West Point would be the most practical site for an iron chain across the Hudson River. Its purpose was to block navigation and prevent the British from sailing upstream. How much did it weigh? Sir, it... Sir, I do not know. Well, I think I got three demerits from the company commander and another 4C. And starting next week, I'm a laundry carrier. Wow. I think they're ganging up on me, Molly. I was afraid that something like that was going to happen. Is that all the sympathy I get? I'm sorry, Jeff, but I'm spazzing out badly on these math problems. I have you. Come in. What is it, Scott? Sir, your laundry tags. Afternoon, sir. Just a minute. Come back here. What's the significance of the cadet colors? Sir, the cadet colors represent the components of gunpowder. Black is for charcoal, gray is for potassium nitrate, and gold is for... You don't know it. Besides, your belt buckle's not shine. Yes, sir. Well, Cavalli just pushed me over the top. 
Now, I'm sure I have over 25 demerits. Oh, that's the pits. That means you have to walk the area. Yeah, I can't wait. that rifle long enough to handle it properly. Oh, that rifle, candidate Groot. I just saw Popey stop you. What did he want? He wrote me up for a dusty rifle. Have we just finished walking the area? <sighs> That's petty. I feel like quitting, Molly. Can't take much more of this garbage. I'm tired of Paul for yelling and hassling me of the insults and the damn fourth class system that makes it impossible for me to defend myself. Jen, look, just don't blow it. They're just testing you. Well, I failed. Look, next week they're going to be on Hagen's case, or they're going to be on Greenway's, or mine. There's a reason for all of this. Oh, uh, you're going to tell me I'm learning how to perform under stress? Well, you are. <sighs> Would you just think of the goal you're after? Just think of the opportunities. The women to graduate from this place are going to have more opportunities than any women have ever had before. Bull! They don't want us here, Molly. None of the women are going to make it through. Well, you certainly won't with that kind of attitude. Well, neither will you, in spite of your red, white, and blue attitude. Look, my father says that if and you in just... spite of your father, I'm tired of hearing about your father. Is that what I get for trying to help you? I'm fed up with your help. Well, I'm fed up with you shooting off your mouth. Oh, terrific. Now you're on my case. What are you trying to prove? That you're better than every man who ever walked the earth? I am better than some. You're making it hard on all of us. On me, on Liz, on Susan, on every girl here. If you don't like it, then move the hell out of here. Well, maybe I will. Come in. What's going on in this snake pit here, anyway? I heard your voices all the way down the hall. Nothing. None of your business. Forget about it. Excuse me. Look, the TAC officer wants to see you in his office right away. And you, you've got a long-distance phone call. OK. Miss Scott, you've been acquiring demerits faster than we like to see. How do you explain that? No excuse, sir. The squad leader says you have a poor attitude. Is that true? I'm trying hard to work within the system, sir. Well, what about this newspaper article? Were you misquoted? No, sir. I think it was blown out of proportion. <sighs> well, that's not hard to believe. And it's possible that Mr. Palfrey may be overreacting a bit. In fact, I may. I may have a talk with him about it. Please don't speak to Mr. Palfrey. I'd like to work this out for myself, sir. Fine. Fine. You're dismissed.
What about your phone call? Anything serious? No, it's just my cousin from Penn State. His fraternity's having an open house on Saturday after the game for visiting cadets, and he wants us to come. Us? Well, he said bring my roommate, and technically that's what you still are. Terrific. You know I can't leave Saturday. I have to walk the area. Well, the CQ just posted a notice that said anybody with less than five hours to walk and go to the game on Saturday. Where are you going? See if I can walk off another hour, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss Scott. What are you doing here? Sir, Cadet Dahl's cousin invited us. I mean, I'm surprised they allowed you to come. I was able to walk off enough tours, sir. Scott, I've been wanting to tell you that I, I'm very sorry for all the trouble you've had over the interview. Sir, you're not supposed to recognize me as a person until June. If you'll excuse me. only trying to see your point of view. Sir, I do not understand. Come on, Miss Scott, let's be fair. It was your option to give the interview and your choice to answer the questions. Sir, I thought it my duty to comply with your request. Scott, look, I'm just curious as to why you answered the way you did. No excuse, sir. And I'm sorry for that, but I... <laughs> Would you like a chance to explain? Well, go ahead. Well, I don't understand why it's turned into such a big deal, to the point where a lot of the upperclassmen are putting me through the meat grinder. I don't disagree, Miss Scott, but I have to tell you, we've all been through it. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you have a, a first name, Miss Scott? Jennifer. Jennifer. I shouldn't be talking like this, sir. I know that. I, uh, I'd just like to say off the record, Miss Scott, that, uh, I think you have a lot of guts, and, uh, I think you're a very attractive person. And I think if you just hang in there, you'll be okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. And, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say that well, I hope you stick it out, because starting in June with recognition, I intend to get to know you. Jennifer. Good evening, sir. Mr. Palfrey just walked in, and he's headed this way. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening sir. sir. Looks like we've got the whole Corps of Cadets here. Doug? JJ? What's going on here? Beer. This is the bar. So it is. Ladies, dismiss. Wait a minute. JJ, this is not Beast Barracks. They're entitled to a beer if they want. Uh, no, but thank you, sir. Hey, listen, what the hell do you think you're doing? Put me down in front of those bean heads. I wasn't putting you down, JJ. And where do you come off hassling plebes on football leave? I think you were fraternizing with them. 
What are you going to do, J.J.? Bring me up on charges? Yes, I will, if I catch you at it. That's how I got the name King. <laughs> Cheers, Brett. See you later, Doug. <clears throat> USMA Library. Who is this? Turn around and look behind you. Hi. I'm on library guard duty tonight. I, sir, I, uh, if you forgive me, I, talking to me at Penn State was bad enough, but this is really dangerous. Well, Miss Scott, Frankly, I was worried about you. If you don't feel well, you should go on sick call. Yes, sir. You look exhausted. Uh, no, sir. It's uh, the Chaucer. It's guaranteed to put you to sleep in two minutes. It's more than the Chaucer, Miss Scott. They're still cracking down pretty hard on you, aren't they? Do you really care? Yes. I do. You're allowed to use the telephones. Just, just be natural. Good evening, sir. Scott, drive on back here. You seem to have an awful lot of time for talking on the phone. How are you on fourth class knowledge? I'm up to date, sir. Let me hear Murphy's Law. Sir. Murphy's Law states that things, when left to themselves, grow from bad to worse. Yeah, well, if I were you, Scott, I would remember that. Dismissed. Sorry I'm late. That's OK. No, it's not. I. I promise I'd help her with her calculus. Is there something bothering you? Oh, I don't know. I'm confused. One minute I want to stay here, and the next I want to forget I ever heard of West Point. Everything will be OK when you go home for Christmas. Yeah. Maybe I can get some perspective on the place. Anything from Paul? No, not today. Sorry. I guess he's as busy as I am. You'll make up for everything when you go home. <sighs> Come on, let's get to work. Chance to get away early. 
You look wonderful. Your hair. <laughs> you look a little thin. I'm okay. Uh, here, let, let me help you with the coat. <sighs> the apartment looks beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Has Paul come home yet? Um, no. But there's a letter for you. It came yesterday. What's the matter, Jan? Huh. Know what a dear John letter is? Yeah. It seems so. Um, Paul has met this marvelous girl who lives in Palm Beach, and her family has offered to uh, take him home for the Christmas holidays. Oh, mm. You know, being away all those months, I mean, it would put a strain on any relationship. Mm. Well, a lot of girls at the point of me getting them, it, uh, it seems like a woman in the army just sends a man away. Let's not think about Paul. Let's go inside, and I'm going to make you something special. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, Mom. Hi, darling. Have a nice day? <sighs> Any day is nice now that that Christmas rush is over. Oh. Hmm. How about you? Oh, I've been setting my exams. Oh. And trying to sort things out for myself. You know, you've been home for three days and you haven't been out of the house once. Mom, may I ask you a question? Sure. Am I less feminine? Of course not. If it bothers you, you know, there's no law that says you have to go back to the point. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Scott. Yes, she is. Just a moment, please. It's for you. It's long distance. Hello? Hello, Jennifer? Hi, it's Doug Davidson. Uh, sir, where are you? I'm up in uh, Ski Village, Vermont. Oh, how nice. Uh, I, uh, I called to wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks. Um, I bet you're having a wonderful time. It's beautiful up there. Oh, you know this place? Uh, sure, it's only an hour away from here. And I used to go up there every year with my high school ski club. It's, it's too bad you couldn't be here this year. Be nice. Is that a comment or a suggestion? Well, I, I guess it's up to you. You have a happy holiday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Surprise, sir? Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you're here. Then you're not going to send me away, sir? 
Will you forget this, sir? Then how can I send you away? It's a public place. Good. Um, uh, where is the snow? I'm still expecting it. There's a lot to do around here, though. I mean, uh... Can I, uh, can I carry your bag? Sure. You happy? Yeah. It's the happiest week I've ever had. Yeah, me too. Now it'll be back to yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir. Yeah, but only till June. Only? It's a long time not to be talking to you. And back to J.J. Palfrey. Yeah, you just gotta do your best. I tell you what, if Palfrey keeps hassling you, I'll break both his legs. <laughs> no. I don't want you taking any more risks for me. I'll be fine. Happy New Year. <sighs> Same to you. You go home for Christmas, get thrown over by your guy, come back, and you act like you're ready to play in the Army-Navy game. Miss Scott, step forward. Hook up. Check your body position. Check your alignment on the horizon. Step off. Good entry. Yeah, that's pretty good, Jennifer. I almost thought you weren't going to make it. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Miss Dahl, step forward. Right, what are they going to think of next? Hook up. You never know when we're going to have to jump off a troop ship. Right. <laughs> How'd you like to get even with the gray hogs? Check what your do you body mean? position. I think I've got an idea that's going to work. Are you crazy? Is revenge crazy? Check your alignment on the horizon. Yeah. All right. <laughs> step off.
identified who perpetrated this stunt. Leaves in this company have finally learned to work together. Cease work. Place your papers in the folder. Dad, I've been separated from the academy. Oh, Molly. Jenny, don't. It's okay, really. No, it's not okay, damn it. You belong here more than any of us. They don't want dummies running the army. You're not a dummy. You froze, that's all. You're just not good at exams. An officer's not supposed to freeze under pressure. Why are you still defending this system? Because it's right. Now just shut up and listen to me, okay? You're gonna have to make it for both of us now. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. Help me with my luggage. My bus leaves in half an hour. Okay. Dear Mom, they said this time of year would be a lift from the gloom and doom of the gray period, and getting good grades in English and history helped. But I really miss Molly, and every time I get a letter from her, I want to cry. Sometimes I wonder why I'm sticking it out, even though the upperclassmen have stopped hazing me. Doug Davidson has noticed my confusion and slipped me a note today asking me to meet him in the library so we could talk it over. I really don't know what to do.
was afraid you wouldn't come. I shouldn't have. That's why I took this chance. I know you've been having a rough time. And I'm really sorry about Molly, but you can't let that affect your performance. You gotta hang in there. You're in the home stretch. I know. It was so stupid. Molly was the only one that never had doubts about whether to stay or go, and she got kicked out. Jen, this is not an ordinary college. You want to be an army officer, you got to take math and engineering. It's tough, and I'm sure it's a lot tougher for girls, but when you have to command large numbers... What do you mean, tougher for girls? You don't really have the natural aptitude for it. Doug. Uh, where are you coming from? What's the matter? Uh, it's natural aptitude stuff. I happen to be sensational in math and engineering. Hey, what's the matter with you? I'm trying very hard here to cheer you up. And orders are orders, right? Congress passed a law, and so it's your duty to comply. What do you want from me? Respect, damn it! Shh. I don't care. Do you have any idea what it feels like to be a woman surrounded by 4,000 men who barely tolerate you being here? It's not the way I feel about you. Never mind how you feel about me. Do you think I should be here? Well, it sure would make things a hell of a lot easier if you weren't. That's what I mean, Doug. Come on, I'm talking about being with you, seeing you. I don't like having to sneak around like this. Well, neither do I. Oh, Jenny, come on, wait a minute. Stop it. I, it was stupid of me, all right? I'm sorry. As for my respect, you've got it. And my love. I just don't want to be patronized, Doug. Sir, Cadet Jennifer Scott reporting to the President of the Regimental Board is ordered. You may be seated. You are charged with exercising poor judgment, fraternizing with upperclassman Cadet Douglas Davidson. You care to make a statement? No, sir. Do you plan to call any witnesses in your behalf? No, sir. Do you acknowledge the validity of these charges? Yes, sir. In his hearing yesterday, Mr. Davidson stated there had been previous meetings between you for which he claimed full responsibility. Sir. Mr. Davidson was trying to help me. I accepted. And as to the meeting at Christmas, I'm mainly responsible. To begin with, Miss Scott, I'd like to say that considering that this is the first year that women have been part of the Corps of Cadets, we are all on trial. Our mission is to make the program work to the best of our ability. What you have done clearly detracts from the success of that mission. Well, they corrected me for over an hour. Wow. Your ears must be numb. Totally. And what did you get? 20 demerits. 15 hours on the area. Goodbye weekends. I think you came out of it pretty good, though. We heard they gave your boyfriend the max. They did? They take away his stripes? It's just a class two offense. Yeah, but it could hurt his chances for his captaincy next year. Right. It's his own fault. Why is it any more his fault than it is hers? He's an upperclassman. He should have known better. Yeah, he should have known better, but this never would have happened if they hadn't let women into this place. Don't you know, hear the news? This is 1977. I don't care if it's 2001. Admitting you people to West Point has taken the edge off the training. Oh. Yeah, and I'm getting tired of the double standard around here. Oh, double standard? Who maxed the course, Greenway? You tell me. when it comes from the upperclassmen, but from you guys. After all, we've been through together. I'm 
had it. Jennifer. Jennifer, oh, what now. Look what you've done. Come in. What is it, Scott? Sir. I've decided to resign. Such a short time for recognition? Yes, sir. It's what you've wanted all along, isn't it? What I want is beside the point. My job is to train plebes and to help evaluate their performance. Sit down, Scott. Suppose you tell me why you waited until now to make this decision. Come on. This is your chance to express yourself. You're pretty good at that. Sir. I think you've gone out of your way to find fault with me. I find fault where I see it. Whether it's with you or Greenway or any of the others. Did you expect some kind of special treatment? No, sir. But fair treatment. Are you implying that I've been unfair? Sir, I think you overreacted to the newspaper interview. I resented it, of course. What did you expect? But how else have I been unfair? By reporting you for fraternizing with Davidson? No, sir. Then how? Sir, your attitude towards women it hasn't been very helpful. Do you mean that I don't approve of women being here at West Point? You're right. I'm here to prepare for combat, because someday I may be asked to put my life on the line for my country. And I have no time to play games with social problems. Well, I'm not going to beg you to stay. If you want to resign, I'll have to get an appointment with the TAC officer. Sit down, Miss Scott. Please relax. Yes, sir. Let me assure you the men will eventually come around. If not this year, next. I just don't feel that I belong here. Maybe none of us do. What might interest you to know, your squad leader doesn't agree with you. I beg your pardon, sir? I have the report right here. It's signed by J.J. Palfrey. In spite of disciplinary problems, it's evident that if any woman can be integrated into the Corps, Cadet Scott possesses the necessary qualifications. I can't believe that, sir. Well, you have to understand, uh, Mr. Palfrey also has conflicting emotions about this business. Well, I, I think he'll always be prejudiced against women being here, sir. Maybe. What did you expect, Miss Scott? A hundred and seventy-four years of tradition just to crumble when you walk through the gate? No, sir. We all have prejudices of one kind or another. I dare say you may have a few of your own. Maybe even against men. At any rate, the most important thing for you to consider is why you came here and what it is you really want. The last decade has been a painful one for the military. Patriotism has become a dirty word. We need people like you, Miss Scott, to communicate the task of defending our country and to maintain contact with the rest of society. Now, maybe you're right. Maybe you don't belong here. I don't know. But I'd really like for you to think it over a couple of days. Please let me know what you decide. It wasn't easy for you to get in here. It will not be easy for you to stay. What did you expect, Miss Scott? 174 years of tradition to just crumble when you walk through the gates? You seem to have a pretty high opinion of yourself, Miss Scott. 
Goodbye, darling. I hope it's everything you want it to be. Give me the history of the Great Chain. I knew it was going to be rough, but I didn't expect anything like this. I'm here to prepare for combat, because someday I may be asked to put my life on the line for my country, and I have no time to play games with social problems. I think if you just hang in there, you'll be okay. Now you gotta make it for both of us, okay? It's evident that if any woman can be integrated into the Corps, Cadet Scott possesses the necessary qualifications. recognized. Congratulations to you. Jennifer? I'm glad you stuck it out. Thank you, sir. It was your comment to Major Kirk that made a lot of difference. Good, good. Well, just remember, you've got three more years. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Now on, it's JJ. 
All right, JJ. Hey, Russell. Congratulations. Thanks, Doug. Hi, Pete. Glad you made it. My name's Doug. Hi, Doug. I'm Oh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. My name's Doug. Congratulations, John. Why, well, I'd like to say that I'm proud of you. And I'd still like to see you. Excuse me, Doug. Sure, Pete. You happy, Jennifer? Yeah. Yeah, well, so am I. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, don't get such a big head. We gotta go to Camp Buckner this summer. And that's the toughest ever. Long right. range patrolling. Mountaineering. Oh, and right. the hand combat. Yeah, and you girls are never gonna make that. You make it, Greenie. Oh, yeah. <laughs>